Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum dear students. Our current session focuses on local proverbs and idioms in social linguistics. I hope and expect by the end of this session you would have an understanding of what is a proverb and what is an idiom and how local proverbs and idioms gather significance in social linguistics. Well, my dear students, in any local culture, in any region, in any society, uh, or a nation, when people use a certain language, there are certain linguistic choices, there are certain linguistic phrases and structures that are used as a part of the culture and they have certain meanings attached to them. These phrases, these linguistic structures give particular meanings to particular objects in that particular culture. And with reference to that, proverbs and idioms that are used in a culture are of great significance. When we move towards the definition of a proverb, I would say, according to online Oxford dictionaries, a proverb is a short, well-known prithi saying, stating a general truth or a piece of advice. So, you know, there are a couple of important things about a proverb. A, it is a precise prithi saying it is not very long. Generally, it is of, uh, it consists of a phrase or it consists of one sentence. And, you know, this proverb also conveys some truth, some cultural, general, or universal truth. According to another definition, a proverb is a short, memorable, and often highly condensed saying embodying, especially with bold imagery, some commonplace fact or experience. So, you know, according to this definition, the most important aspect of a proverb is that it is memorable. It is created in such a way by using such a linguistic structure or by using such vocabulary choices that it is easy to remember. Well, my dear students, proverbs are very closely associated with culture. They are a mirror of culture. They are a reflection of culture. They tell us about the beliefs, customs, and values of a particular culture. The new Dictionary of Cultural Literacy defines Proverbs as short, pretty sayings that reflect the accumulated wisdom. Now, this part is important because proverbs are oral wisdom, which means they are shifted from one generation to the other orally. Most of the times, they are not formed in a written form. You know, when they are originated, they are not formed in a written form. Though in the current times, we find some written records of proverbs. So, they, in a way, are transmitters of accumulative wisdom wisdom of generations not only wisdom of generations but also you know the beliefs of people attitudes of people towards life thus they also communicate the prejudices of people and the superstitions of human race on the other hand if we uh, talk about an idiom by definition an idiom is an expression that means something other than its words seem to suggest. So, you know, directly the words do not mean that. Directly the structure of language that is chosen does not reflect that, but it means something else than what apparently it suggests. Well, the study of language constantly re requires interpretations on the social uh, platform. You know, in one society, the same uh, words can be interpreted in a different way as compared to another society where the interpretations would change. Proverbs and idioms are determined also by socio-geographical experience. You know, the kind of community in which you live socially and the kind of geographical setup that that community has. You know, if there would be mountains around, if there would be rivers around, if there would be green trees around, or if there would be deserts around, you know, all that would also be, those geographical conditions would also be reflected in the word choice of proverbs as well as of idioms. Proverbs, like riddles and jokes, or like fairy tales, do not fall out of sky. They are not also randomly created. They are products of a mythical soul of the folk, which means, you know, through generations, something happens somewhere, some beliefs are established that take the shape and the form of these proverbs and idioms. They are always coined by people, as I have earlier said, in some situation, in some context. 
Well, as far as the oral tradition, be it of idioms or of proverbs, is concerned, it influences the ways members of any given community think, how they perceive, and how they feel about the world. So, you know, the perception of the world is shown through, or it is reflected through, or it is mirrored through proverbs and idioms. Oral tradition of proverbs provides insights into how one society thinks differently from the other society, how society A has different set of beliefs as compared to society B or society C. Shipper 2010 believes the basic themes of proverbs are derived from elementary human experience, basic human experience, and they revolve around basic human activities. So, for example, according to him, in proverbs, women are mostly associated with beauty and men with intelligence. Why? Because in most of the societies, this is how men and women, they are characterized. The notion that women have no brains, women have no intelligence, for example, is culturally embedded in so many societies, and thus it is reflected in the linguistic choices that are made in proverbs. I would just quickly share a few examples. For example, there is a Mongolian proverb that says, more beauty than a peacock, but the intelligence of a block of wood. So, you know, a woman is reduced to a block of wood, something that is not even animate, you know, when it comes to intelligence. A Polish proverb says, a doll's head and an empty brain. So, you know, in different societies, you know, um, and in different cultures, women are, you know, generally considered to be brainless. They are considered to be um, not intelligent. However, the expressions that are used are different. They vary from one culture to another culture when it comes to proverbs. In the same way, from the USA context, for example, in, there is an English um, proverb, women are wacky, women are vain. They'd rather be pretty than have a good brain. So, you know, um, there are certain general ideas of, uh, you know, folk wisdom or folk belief that all the societies, I would say almost all the societies share. And by choosing different wordings, they are presented in different ways. Arabic saying is, women have only half a brain. And, by the way, when it comes to Urdu, I am sure you would have heard it somewhere, Aurat Nakasul Akl Hoti Hai. So, you know, the same idea, the same folk thought is presented in proverbs of different cultures and in different languages in different ways.